Hey there, Cameron here with Seabutters Tech, and we are going to be looking at some eGPU combined with a few different tablets. Now, I've been looking primarily at the Surface Pro 10, and we're going to see how it fares against something that I'm interested in that I don't have is the Mini Forum V3 tablet. Uh, but a really good analog for that, which uses an AMD with the same core configuration uh, and same 780M graphic solution is actually the Legion Go, which has a Thunderbolt 4, or sorry, USB 4 in the top, which lets you use it with eGPU. So we'll be looking at the Surface Pro 10 and a Mini Forum V3 analog, the Legion Go. And we'll also be using uh, the GPD G1 eGPU on the AMD side, which has a 7600 M XT. And then I have uh, <laughs> this long standing guy, the Oros Custom, and I actually have a 4060 LP in there right now, which will represent the NVIDIA side of things. Uh, so, with no further ado, let's take a look at this eGPU scaling super test. Now, uh, I'll just go through these slides really quickly. Uh, the uh, two devices that we're looking at, the Surface Pro 10, has an Intel 165U with Thunderbolt 4 at 40 gigabits per second bandwidth. There's two P cores, 10 E cores. The AMD Z1 Extreme on the Legion Go uh, has USB 4, 40 gigabits per second, eight cores, good analog for the upcoming Minis Forum V3. Now let's take a look at the combination of eGPUs that we have. We have the custom Oros a gaming box, and that's Thunderbolt 3, 40 gigabits per second with a gigabyte RTX 4060 LP in it. And it is running at a TDP of 115 watts, which is standard for that 4060 that's inside of it. And uh, the next is that GPD Win G1, which is a 100 watt device, 7600 MXT, and it's Thunderbolt full for 40 gigabits per second. I won't be doing any Oculink eGPU in this video because I don't have any devices that have Oculink. Okay, so before we get too far on these slides, I really want to show you what's going on here because it's there's a lot. There's a lot going on. So in all of the graphs that you're going to see today, this first column is going to be the iGPUs of the Surface Pro 10 and the Legion Go, which has the AMD Z1 Extreme, was basically a 780M in it. And so this first uh, graph is showing you how the iGPUs between Intel and AMD compare in these two devices on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p high. And you can see the Legion Go, it has a much more powerful integrated graphics solution and it gets 42 versus 26. The next set of graphs are both devices again, but now using those eGPUs. And so uh, here's the GPD G1, and on the Surface Pro it got 94, but when using the Legion Go, it got 98. The 4060 RTX, uh, it got 90 on the Surface Pro 10 and 96 on the Legion Go, which means that the Legion Go appears to, when you're using the the screen on those devices, uh, the Legion Go seems to let frame rates go higher uh, with its integration of Thunderbolt slash combination of platform. Hard to tell exactly what's causing that. But then, uh, so these are using the uh, monitor on the devices. Then, because you're limited by bandwidth with Thunderbolt 4, I did the tests again, but connecting the eGPU directly to an external monitor, which generally improves the frame rate by a substantial amount on eGPU. So these graphs are using the device's screen and these graphs are using external screen directly connected to the eGPU. So you can see in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, again, the Surface Pro only achieved 106 frames per second score on 
the GPD G1 where the Legion Go got 115 and on the 4060, 97 versus 109. Definitely see a pattern of the Legion Go, the AMD Thunderbolt solution, Thunderbolt platform and CPU is outperforming the Surface Pro 10 in all of these tests on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And when you compare how good is the AMD versus NVIDIA GPU, you can see they're actually pretty neck and neck when you compare a 4060 and a 7600M. Um, and the cool thing is this eGPU 7600M, this GPD Win G1, uh, when you give it an external monitor, it scales a little bit more than the NVIDIA solutions. Like you can see it, the frame rate jumped quite a bit using an external monitor on this particular benchmark. So interesting results here. Let's go to the next result, which is Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. So you can see the iGPUs between the Surface Pro and the Legion Go. The Legion Go all creamed it again. Uh, by a wide margin, 3719 versus 2437. And now in this benchmark, when you compare the RTX 4060 versus the AMD 7600M, you can see that 4060 really takes off in this particular benchmark when you compare the two and you're using it on their own screen. When you use an external monitor, look at this though, the 7600M really wakes up on an external monitor. Look at the improvement going from on-device screen to external monitor. That's a huge jump. The 4060 also jumps quite a bit, uh, but not to the same extent that this 7600M does. But overall, uh, when you're using external monitor, the 4060 does get uh, better times, although very close when you're using the 7600M with the Legion Go. Uh, so there's really interesting dynamics happening here. We're looking at a lot of different things at once. The other notable thing is if you look all the blue lines, which are the Surface Pro 10, it even when you're using an eGPU, it lags behind just because the, the I don't know exactly what it is. It could be the platform. It could be the weaker CPU. Um, but for some reason, even though Intel kind of developed the Thunderbolt platform and Intel's own platform, AMD seems to be really uh, working better with these eGPUs on the Legion Go than it does with the Surface Pro 10. All right, let's move into Cyberpunk. And you can see uh, we've got uh, the iGPU about doubling, the Legion Go doubling the Surface Pro 10's graphic solution. Um, one note about that, the Surface Pro 10 has the 165U. If you get a device that has the 165H, you actually get eight more execution units on your graphics. And I would expect that to give you a pretty big bump and bring you up to par. So they really kind of neutered the 165U. Although it is better than Surface Pro 9, the Surface Pro 10 165U is still, could have been a lot better. And if you get a device that has a 165H, you will see pretty close to what you're seeing on the Legion Go here. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that doesn't help us Surface Pro 10 users. We do see that the integrated graphics are quite a bit weaker than what you would see on the AMD Z1 Extreme. So uh, let's look at the eGPU results. Uh, 7600M takes the win here, uh, just barely. They're, they're pretty equivalent between the two of these. Um, but um, you can see that, again, I mean, the common theme here is the Surface Pro 10 is a little bit behind the Legion Go when you're running an eGPU. Um, I won't explain every single thing. You can, you can see here uh, what the results are. So that's our Cyberpunk results. The absolute winner of all these is using the GPD Win G1 on the Legion Go. That gives us the highest result. Let's go ahead and move to the next slide, Time Spy. So on this one, you can see that the iGPUs, Pro 10 versus Legion Go, a little bit closer here, but uh, still Legion Go is kind of beating it out as, as we see here. When you look at the uh, AMD 7600M versus the NVIDIA 4060 eGPU results, a uh, little bit weaker on the 7600M, get the best result here with the uh, 4060 and the Legion Go. 
which gives us an 8964 time spy score. Um, but again, once you add that external monitor, that GPD G1 really wakes up and you get a pretty massive boost uh, from 6989 to 9165 and uh, the 4060 as well. The, the highest score we see on the benchmark is the Legion Go with the 4060 on this one, getting a time spy score of 9644. So uh, some pretty interesting results that took a lot of time to mix and match that many combinations of external monitors and eGPU devices, but hopefully this helps you make some decisions. Uh, I'm really interested to see that uh, Minis Forum V3 when it comes out. Uh, I have one on order, so it will be here soon. Uh, I do expect it will have similar, if not better, results to the Legion Go because the platforms are so similar. The Legion Go has the Z1 Extreme chip in it, but it's very similar to the 7840U, which is um, very similar to what's going to be in the Minis Forum V3. It's one generation newer but still same core amount, same uh, RDNA 3 graphics, uh, but it will have the 8840U, very similar to the 7840U, which is the same thing as the Z1 Extreme, pretty much. So anyways, if you're wondering what performance you could expect out of a V3, this is a pretty good analog. So anyways, hope this video was useful. If you want more videos like it, go ahead and subscribe. Leave me a comment if you have some ideas on what to look at with some of these devices while I have them on hand. And we'll see you on the next video.